damn me, Uxbridge. If I ever saw 30,000 men run a race before. The whole line will advance. In which direction, Your Grace? Why, straight ahead, to be sure. Um, welcome back to Beyond Territory, it's Doug. I uh, just want to start by a big thank you to those that have subscribed and liked my videos and all the fantastic comments I've had on on the channel so far. Um, still all new to this, so I hope I've got back to everyone that's put a comment on there. And um, Yeah, but thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you for participating in a bit of conversation and getting things interested. I want to thank the Facebook groups that I've joined recently. Um, they've been incredible. And if you're not in a Facebook uh, group at the moment that links to your hobby somewhere, I would recommend them. Um, a lot of honest feedback, some good uh, pointers, places uh, to really share what you're doing and get ideas. And We're all keen hobbyists and um, oh, it's just fantastic. I just, I'm not sure how to put it, I just, I was humbled. I've been humbled by how people have um, supported each other. And looking back through the group, you can see how how frequent the help is there. And, you know, we're in a difficult place at the moment, lockdown. I think, I can be honest, I'm, I'm finding it tough. But having somewhere to go and share and talk and discuss and get again excited by your hobby um, without being in isolation is, is really cool. It's really important. Um, and that leads me to what I'm trying to do today. And from these Facebook groups, from the YouTube channels that I've been watching, I've got a bit of inspiration about what I want to do next with my British Peninsula Army and uh, the leaders. Okay. So here are some of my little sketches. Um, whenever I'm building some sort of terrain or um, environment for my uh, models to go in, I like to do a little sketch a couple of ideas there's a couple of pages before the thumbnails but these are the these are the two that i've decided on and um yeah i hope to in this video work through one of them maybe two of them depends how quick or how easy i can edit the videos into showing you my techniques and uh, what i do i'm on the kitchen table and uh, these are bits and pieces i hope to use um a bit of hardboard etc i'm going to use to base um, old bits of wood chip, I've got my razor, trusted razor sword, a couple of old brushes for basing, I've got some dowel, if you haven't got dowel, dowel's awesome stuff. Um, my pot of bits and bobs, my scrap pot, because I'm only doing the little base, I thought I'd just dig out my scrap pot and it's a foam core card, it's the blue styrofoam. It's bits of sticks and twigs and everything else. Forage for a little tree that I'm, I might trim down and use as well, possibly. Um, my knife, a little sculpt tool, file, pen, metal rule, little drill. Um, and then I've got some, oh, let's reach for it, some das. Muddling clay that I like playing with and using and <laughs> ready to use filler. I love that stuff. I know there's sculptor mould and there's all these other things that are out there that I haven't used yet. Um, but this is what I do when I, what I can reach to hand that I have in and around my hobby area. And uh, I'm just going to bish it, bash it, bosh it. And see what happens, I suppose. Hopefully coming out a bit like my uh, concept drawings prior <laughs> at the beginning. Um, we'll see what comes out. These are my two trusted kernels that I've recently finished off. First horses I've painted. Um, he's not stuck on yet. But that's my first um, kernel. And then the other one is stuck down. What I've done so far. There you go, two kernels. I'm gonna focus on this kernel first. Got a bit of old hardboard that I've chopped down, give it some smooth edges. Need a little bit of sorting out a bit, but 
my aim for this evening, I'm going to try to get these two bases kind of done, is in base materials done, sculpting a surface and maybe putting some of the key features in. And hopefully my aim after that is to get these both finished in two evenings. We'll see. Well, first thing I'm going to do, I've dug out some bits of phone call card. And what I want to do is try and build up the surface area. Just to begin with, on one side. I'm just going to break the great thing about this stuff, you can pinch it, break it, and cut into it. It's got a nice outer edge to it, provides a little bit of stability. To the to the surface and then you can kind of pick away cut away or hot glue gun careful with hot glue guns knives and all that kind of stuff you don't want to be burning yourself which <laughs> is inevitable I think I've burnt myself so many times with hot glue gun I can't count but it's a nice quick method of joining materials on. I've already found a few more bits. Let's play around with it. Put that on. Got it on. Alright, so I've raised that area now. I brought the kernel into the piece just to see a bit of sense of scale and size. And I thought that actually there's a lot of dead ground on this side. And it would be good if it was like some sort of path, sunken path. So I'll add another bit of, oh, not as high raised surface, but something else on that side. Half area through the middle. And what I'm going to use, I'm going to use the uh, smoothing filler, already mixed up. And I like this stuff. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a bit messy, a few dollops here and there. And the idea of this stuff is that I'm going to create, so it's not just a flat surface, it's got a bit of undulating texture and it blends in between. My fingers in as well. Blends in between the base and the hill that I've kind of built up a little bit there. It's got three dimensional properties to it now because I've raised some of the surface. So let's get to turn it around, have a look on this side. Another little dollop on my finger, blend it in. Big APS, something like that. He's a great YouTuber and he uses um, Sculptor Mold, which I have not used yet. Um, I'm still sticking with this stuff for the moment because I've got loads of it and it's, it's sitting in my garage. So that's why I've been using this. But I will definitely endeavour to have a look at that stuff. Um, have a go of it. Test it out. I'm going to get a tree in. I found this old branch out there. I'm going to trim it down, break it down and uh, set it in the scenery. So I made the tree a bit smaller, hopefully to scale. I think I'm gonna stick it about there. I'm gonna use my tool just to poke in to the... Film core card, make a hole, get space for it. And the great thing about this polyfiller, and I call it polyfiller, it's probably called loads of different names, but is that I can, it sets hard and I can use it to stick my newly created tree where I want it. Part of my idea, I'm going to get this to dry to one side, but part of my idea was to build a wooden fence. I'm not sure if it's going to be a broken wooden fence or I'm not sure I haven't decided let's see what I've got but I've got some broken bits of 
Dow, what's more Dow? Thinking, that's a quite a thin piece. I might use that and just trim it up now on the cutting mat. I've got one of my favorite materials, coffee stir stick. Um, I'm gonna trim that down. So there's my um, little fence. I thought the coffee stir stick was a bit too thick. There's the other half. So what I did, I split it in half and I decided to um, just use the natural split that it created. First part of the build, I've got my um, undulating ground, I've got my tree located, waiting for the fence to dry. Um, got to let all the filler dry and then then we come back to start adding some textures into it and basing materials and all the, the fun bits that make it come alive. Okay, this is going to be the other base. It's an old bit that I used to use for something else. I've just picked off all the old bits and bobs on it. It's got a bit of texture on it, but we'll see what happens with it. Best use it and then go, it go to waste. Got lots of scrap bits everywhere. So let's have a, let's have a play with this. So again, similar method. Um, this one's got more of a ridge on one side. Um, with a little, the idea was a bit of a mountain, rocky, I don't know, rocky terrain to behind him, behind him. So again, my off cuts. All right, broken those bits down. Time for the hot glue gun. I want it in display. So I'm just gonna splurge it down. Spread it around. It's a bit of it on there. I like being messy and I like getting stuck into it and see what happens. All right, so we've got that layer down. Found this bit of bark. I thought it was quite interesting. I'm not sure which way around I want it. Let's go for something like that. It's got a raised bit of rock sitting on top. All right, there we go, pretty cool. All right, now polyfiller, my favorite bit. Now, what I'm doing is having it as a, it's quite a lot I've got on here to begin with. But once it's in, a bit of a wet finger, building the edge and the ridge, one side coming down like a path. So, so, just added a little bit more foam core, built in the filler a little bit more. And this is for this kernel, he's going to be trotting by, commanding. Okay, just um, a little update, I've based now, put the first base coat down, graze on it. Just gotta wait for that to dry now, uh, and then we'll start getting some materials on there, get some textures growing, growing, <laughs> get some textures going. There you go, nice and dry, got the gray layer paint. What I'm gonna do now is get my first layer of textures in. Um, uh, I'm gonna start with some sand. So I'm gonna get my PVA in, my trusted rugged brush. All right, get my sand, a little bit of sand. I just brushed off some of the sand, it was a bit clumping. I spread it out a bit, I've got a bit of texture on my base now. That's my first fine sand. Time for the next base. Again, same process. I think about where I'm gonna put this sand. Brush it on. Okay, I'm just going to come in now. What I'm going to do is come in with some sterling uh, mud. Quite like the textured paint. Um, and I'm just going to bring it in into my mound. Okay, so the first layer of sterling mud is on there. Uh, getting a bit of depth to it now. A few different textures. 
I'll do the same now to the next one, but stir the mud. I then go in with a little bit of medium brown German camo, just bring a little bit more change of tones of browns into the soil, get that base coat going, a bit more textures. I, I, I do a little bit of a wash with it, but also try and highlight with a bit of it as a as a dry brush as well. It starts to come alive now. Please with it. Let's the cool. next thing I'm going to do is put a little wash of Agrax Earthshade into some of the crevices in the mud around the edges here. And then I'm going to give it a whirl at using the Contrast Cygore Brown as well. Only a bit sparingly because I've not used it on terrain before like this. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. So let's find out. Okay, with the Agrax, I'm just going to come in along the edges. And then I'm going to do similar to this one as well. So the washes have dried and the um, and the contrast Saigal Brown has kind of started to settle in as well, so you get some different tones of brown. So we're just going to dry brush a bit of flat brown back into, into the terrain. And a bit on this one as well. I'm also going to dry brush the flat brown onto the fence as well. My next layer of textures. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to focus on this one first. Just a little bit on the edge here. And a little bit on this edge here. I'm going to use some Army Painter brown ground. This stuff is awesome. Well, I really like it anyway. Sprinkle it in. And something similar on the other one as well. Bring in some of the gravel. And I'll bring in some of my first flock. And I use quite a fine flock to begin with. So I decided to add a little bit more flock around the tree and on the back here as well. Let that dry for a bit. And then I'm gonna work on the other one. And again, slap him on gorgeous PVA. I'm gonna leave this rock for a bit because I need to do a few more tones, a few more colors on it basically. going to do now is bring in a lot of this cool stuff. Put quite a big dollops of glue but as I said before the great thing about PVA is it dries clear. So you slap it all on and it doesn't matter. Okay just put a few bits of this cork in. I'm just going to focus on the, the rock face and I'm going to come in for a layer of London grey. Uh, not on all of it. And um, a lot of rocks aren't grey, all that. They, they've got a lot of other tones in there. I'm going to put a really watered down flat brown just into some of the areas. Whilst the grey, London grey, is a bit wet as well. 
So I'm going to put another dry brush onto my fence whilst everything is dry, and I'm just going to touch the edges from the top. What I'm going to do is add another layer of flocking, and this time this stuff's a bit finer. And I'm going to add it in amongst some of the grass. So I'm going to pick out just areas, spots, patches. Just going to some quite tufty bits. What I'm going to use next is a bit of summer undergrowth, um, just to bring a little bit more point of interest. I have it up by the fence here. It comes in different shades of greens. I'm just going to combine a bit in amongst it. Okay, next bit, I'm going to come back in with Administratum Grey from Citadel. And I'm just going to dry brush. It's a little bit drier. And then I'm going to come in with an off-white and just pick out some of the sharper edges of the rock. I'm just going to put a little bit of flock, a fine flock, just a bit on the rock. It's got some moss or something growing on top of it. And the finishing touches are like these stickers of tufts. I'm just going to take one or two, put a couple on each, just to give it a bit of interest. Okay, there's one finished. That's one of my com commanders, my colonels. There you go, just have a little bit of a spin so you can see it from all views. I'll take some pictures as well so you can see it. And the other base, just give it a bit of a spin. You can see it from all views. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. You horse melt! You thieves! You blackguards!